This podcast is sponsored by Nobody. Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now, I am so excited for today's guest because I have wanted a regular cast member from Doogie Howser MD on here for a long time, and no better way to have one with my favorite actress on that show, Lucy Borier, who played Janine Stewart, Vinnie Del Pino's girlfriend. Yeah, she's got a a new movie out called uh, Murder and Cocktails, a uh, kind of a murder mystery slash comedy movie, and I'm so excited to have her on, and uh, she's done some horror stuff, she was in uh, Mick Garris and Stephen King's Sleepwalkers, she was in a um, very brief scene in uh, Toby Hooper and John, John Carpenter's Body Bags, she was in one of the segments of that, and it's going to be a great conversation today, you know, she's, she also guest starred on Star Trek The Next Generation, and she's done some good stuff, and I can't wait, Um, and oh my god, rest in peace, Carl Weathers, Apollo Creed, Action Jackson, Chubbs Peterson, need I say more? A huge part of my life since I was a kid. I tell you though, my dad met him in 1988, there was a celebrity baseball game in San Francisco, and he went up to him, asked him for his autograph, instead of saying, hi, how are you, what's your name? Uh, Carl Weathers took the uh, the pad of paper and scribbled on it and gave it back to my dad, you know, not even saying uh, th- thank you to him. My dad said thank you to him, but uh, Carl Weathers didn't say thank you to him, just didn't interact with him. Nevertheless, though, he was a huge part of my life and my childhood, and his work will be missed. Rest in peace, Carl Weathers. So yeah, here is my interview with Lucy Boyer. Hey, Lucy, welcome to the show. How are you today? Hey, Tommy, I'm good. How are you doing? I cannot tell you how thrilled I am. This is such an honor. Thank you so much for finally taking the time today. This is awesome. Oh, you're so sweet. Yeah, I'm really excited to talk to you. Awesome, awesome. So... Let's start with this movie, Murder and Cocktails. I watched the trailer. It looks hilarious. How, how did you get the part? and Was it fun to make? Oh, yeah. I spent uh, all of last uh, Christmas vacation, mm-hmm. not this, this recent one, but the one previously, auditioning for the movie. Wow. And I, yeah, it was fun. I, I pretty much, I read for, you know, another role in the movie. I read for, like, three of the female roles. So, and then ended up playing Rose. So. Yeah, it, it looks like a variation on Neil Simon's Murder by Death or the Clue movie from 1985. Oh. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then Ron, the Ron Jackson, the writer, mm-hmm. uh, he's, he's a big uh, Thin Man series uh, fan, you know, with William Powell and Myrna Loy. Yeah. Thin Man series, the, the couple who they just, they do like part-time sleuthing. You know, sleuthing on the side. And they solve mysteries, crimes. Um, and then they have this, like, back-and-forth banter, and that's kind of what he based the characters on, Nick and Lana. Nice. And of course, like, all those movies, it had all these, like, kooky characters who came in. So that's, you know, I'm one of the kooky characters. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is this movie PG or is it R? Because, I, I mean, I don't, there's no nudity, but there's murder and cocktails. So it's, there's drinking, there's um, smoking, yeah. you know, of marijuana and marijuana use. And so, love it. Child appropriate. Love it. Uh, Yeah, there's a couple actors in there I'm familiar with, like Jeff Nimoy, who's Lear Nimoy's son, and um, Brian Lowley. I just started watching his podcast on YouTube. What a character. I can't believe I wasn't familiar with him before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was great. You know, um, both he and Narissa, who plays his uh, wife, Mm -hmm. uh, Narissa Tedesco, she plays Bernice. Uh, Sergeant Russell's wife. They were both so sweet with me. Like she helped me with my with the final scene. Oh. Ryan um, on set that day when we, we 
we're shooting like the, the final scene, the, the big scene, and uh, he went over that scene with me. And you know, he's an uh, acting coach, or he's an acting teacher. Mm-hmm. He has a whole, uh, has a whole school in North Hollywood, right? North yeah. Hollywood. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so going back in time, I was reading that uh, you were a competitive baton twirler. I, I have not heard that in years. I don't even know if anyone still does that. But uh, what got you into it? <laughs> I think they do in the Midwest. Don't they still twirl the baton? I, like t- in, I haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah, I grew up in Portland, Oregon, up, you know, close to Washington. And it was just a big thing. Well, it was a, it was the free class at the YWCA is really how I ended up there. <laughs> but I enjoyed it and I took to it and had a, a bit of a because I'm a good juggler. So you know, baton twirling is just kind of juggling, but you're dancing. I guess rhythmic dancing is probably a close thing. But the main thing, they had the uh, pageants. So you would do baton twirling in the morning, you'd do the interview Mm -hmm. in the afternoon, and then you'd do modeling in the evening. And then they would have, you know, Miss, uh, you know, Clackamas County or Miss, uh, you know, Miss Portland. Yeah. (laughs) Junior baton, you know, queen or whatever it was. And they had, you know, they had crowns and sashes and everything. So it was... It was really a way for, although I liked it, because uh, I'm, I'm a dancer first, and then I'm an actor, mm-hmm. but uh, the baton twirling, it just kind of covered all that, the facets of being able to perform and talk to people, and, you know, as close as I could come to Hollywood, I think, at eight years old. I wasn't Neil yeah. Patrick Harris. Now, he, he told his parents, we're going to Hollywood, and moved them from... You know, they moved from New Mexico to Hollywood when he, he stated that at like seven or eight years old. Right. <laughs> and then picked up and went, you know. Yeah. And, uh, so I'm going to compete in the baton competition. <laughs> but then it was really, it was like every weekend, really, went during the season when it was, so it was quite, you know, it kept me busy. I could practice baton in the driveway and then mm-hmm. on the weekends my mom would take me to the competitions and I could go and you know annoy people I don't know. <laughs> were you were your parents performers uh, my mother was yeah she's uh, uh, she kind of really got me into it because uh, she would read to me at a young age and she would do all the voices you know, for like every, like when she'd be reading Snow White and she'd be doing all these crazy, you know, the, the evil stepmother and the, the sisters, she did all the voices, <laughs> I think. And so we just started, you know, it just kind of, that type of thing came naturally. She was a really an avid reader, well-educated. So we were always at the library. And then she was just taking me to Shakespeare plays from a very young age. Wow. The Oregon Shakespeare Festivals up in Oregon, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I'm very, I'm very familiar with that. That's that's where a lot of Hollywood actors go to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Uh, the, uh, I saw some wonderful people growing up though, performing there. It was really uh, that that's kind of where I was headed. I thought I was headed. Mm-hmm. I went to like I went to Cal Art. Um, after when I left Portland, after high school, I went to Cal Arts in Valencia. Right. Um, here, yeah, in Los Angeles. Um, I was there when Don Cheadle was there. Wow, Don Cheadle. He was two years older than me. Mm-hmm. And so, like, my first year, he was like a BFA, his bachelor's degree, uh, third year. Yeah. And I was watching him do the Chekhov uh, plays. And, I mean, he stood out then. Um, like, you know, as a young uh, drama student, he stood out on stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, I'm sure he's one of those guys that, yeah, you look at, you know, before he was famous and said he's going to be famous because he's that good, do you know? Absolutely. He was famous at CalArts <laughs> when I was there. You know, amongst that, and, and you know, all the theater students are just, it's so competitive. And, 
everyone's highly competitive with each other. So, it, you know, it's not like ever, they're congratulations. <laughs> Someone's patting each other on the back. Really. Were there any other classmates there that we would know? Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Well, the head of Pixar, Andrew, uh, he, was, he was in the animation department. Uh, I think it was my year. Um, what's his last name? Let me, let me look it up. It right now. <laughs> head of Pixar. <laughs> but uh, let's see, who else? Oh, well. Because there's 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 Jim Morris, the general manager, and there's Pete, uh, doctor, uh, the president. Uh, maybe he's not there anymore. And uh, yeah, maybe, I thought it was the beginning of Andrew. Well, anyway, Andrew Stanton. Department. Yes, Andrew Stanton. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there we go. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so he he was there uh, in the animation department, and then there was a guy in the animation department named Kerry Conran. Mm-hmm who has also gone on to do not to, to the fame of Andrew Stanton, but uh, he's got quite quite a following of his own. And I did I did some work with him. I did this uh, was probably one of my very first doing films and kind of like what kind of set me on the path to Hollywood because I got my screen actor skill card a couple of years after this, but it's called That Darn Bear. And it was live action and 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 animation. That darn bear? <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, Kerry Conran, K-E-R-R-Y-C-O-N. So mm-hmm. he's R-A-N. So he's done a lot of, like, innovative stuff. Has kind of a cult following, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was so fun because I, you know, for most of my scenes, I was really working with, like, a tennis ball because <laughs> they were going to animate the bear <laughs> in it. And I was playing this guy who turns into a bear Mm-hmm. Uh, when he gets like really emo- excited and emotional or something, something like that, and um, so I was playing his girlfriend, who's a woman girl he's in love with, and uh, I thought that was fun. Like I, I like working with. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, everything was added later. You know, you didn't really have to worry whether or not you were going to get along with your co-star. <laughs> exactly. Probably just me and my baton. Uh, in 1987, you were in the ABC After School special, The Day My Kid Went Punk, and um, I've talked to Jay Underwood, great guy, and Holly Fields is a friend. She was like barely 11 playing 17 in this movie. She did that a lot back then. She she did a, a, a MacGyver where she was a 16-year-old hooker, and she was like 12 at the time. <laughs> is, th- is that where you got your SAG card? Uh, yeah. And it was really, it was between uh, my third and fourth year at CalArts, and I had a boyfriend who was the director, Fern Fields. He was doing like a summer internship with her. Mm-hmm. So he, she couldn't, she didn't pay him because it's an internship, right? Yeah. And so I think it was like a favor to him. She said, oh, well, I'll audition, I'll audition Lucy. She can come in and read, you know, we've got a, a character has got like five lines or something. And went in and read for and she gave it to me. I mean, really, it, it's pretty unheard of, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Especially uh, nowadays. I mean, it seemed like back then, without the internet, just everybody had a lot more respect for each other and camaraderie, and just everybody worked, you know, together, you know, and stuff. Now it's just much more divided with the internet and stuff. Yeah, that's interesting. It is. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh... I I mean she I think she saw how hard I had worked and you know I was at Cal Arts and I'd been working at acting since the, I think it was the seventh eighth grade mm-hmm. really really took hold to it although I'd been doing things before that yeah um, you know a little bit of musical theater as a kid a little bit of you know here Com- and you did commercials right in Oregon what's that you did commercials in Oregon. Yeah, and then when I was young, you know, it was part of the baton twirling, and, um, but they didn't have a formal, you know, you couldn't get an agent there at that time. You could, you could certainly do theater, you know, an audition for theater, but as far as, like, local television, it was, it was pretty spot, spotty, you know? Yeah. 
really the only venue. You know, it's not like today they have Atlanta. You could go up to Canada. You could go, you know. <laughs> yeah. Go to Australia. They have a booming industry. I know. It's a completely different landscape. It really is. So I own every, I own all four seasons of, of Doogie Howser on DVD. Me and my mom used to watch it every week when I was growing up. I can still remember the feeling I felt during the pilot when Doogie and Wanda are slow dancing. It, it comes right back to me whenever I watch it now. And Janine shows up in episode three in that first season. So was it a standard audition you got? I, I was actually in the very uh, first episode. I guess it, it was the pilot. Oh, that's right. You, you, were, you were seen, but you didn't have a line. That's yeah, right. Four of us. Um, so that was, that was actually my first scene. So that's in, and that's episode one. And then I come back in three. Yeah. And, and I, did, I did like 10, I think, that first season. But yeah, the audition, I had like like five lines in that first scene. And it was a, I'd gone in and read for the casting director. He was so sweet. And um, and back in that day, like I had five days to prepare, mm-hmm. you know, I think for the callback. And I just thought to myself, I had to put everything into these five lines. I possibly can muster a night. Uh, you walk in, and in those days, it really was. It was Stephen Bochco was there. It was a crowd of like 20, 25 people. Mm-hmm. It was all the producers, all the writers, the um, probably some of the network, um, you know. And and it was it was great, you know. It went fantastic. It was just like doing theater when you when you train in theater, you know. Then you you get back up there, and it's like riding a bike, kind of. You walk in, you're on stage. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I think you were the best actor on that show, and I mean that sincerely, because uh, Janine's flighty vulnerability and quirkiness was just so wonderful. And you could do comedy and drama so great. Um, I mean, there were, so oh. many, there were so many great actors on that show. James Sicking, Lawrence Pressman, Marcus Redman. Everybody was great. Ah. But I... I, I just every time I, I watch you on screen on that show, I just... I just, I just love it, you know. Did you think that? The, absolutely. Did Did you think the premise was preposterous, or did you right away recognize the tongue in cheek genius of Bochco's humor? <laughs> uh, I, th- I thought it was. I thought he was hilarious. You know. Uh-huh. Uh, what, see, what came right after that was the the one with um, Turner and Hooch. I think that was the next year, or did he do the? He had the musical Cop Rock, too. Oh, Cop Rock, yes. <laughs> so he was, like, right at that time, you know, coming off Hill Street Blues and L.A. Law, they actually were sh- shot next to us on the next soundstage on 20th Century Fox. And he had so, just done a show with John Ritter called Hooperman, and that show was also Hooperman. comedy. That was also a comedy and drama show, but it left people scratching their heads. They didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Right. <laughs> That's not, not Turner and Hooch. Cooperman. Cooperman. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So right in that moment when Doogie came about, he was really, he was very, he was in this like very avant-garde kind of phase, right? Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. or just very new, you know, just doing things that people weren't, other people were not doing. Yeah, well, you know, Bochco had those hit shows, and when you get to that level of success, then you get to a point where you can do anything you want, no matter how ridiculous it seems. And I think that show and Hooperman were definitely the oddities in in that in his success, you know. But people remember those shows just as much as they remember Hill Street Blues and L.A. Law, you know. Right, right. So uh, at lunchtime, you know, break, and then the big alarm. A sound stage goes, and then we would walk out, and I would see all the LA Law characters walking out. <laughs> it was hilarious. You know, we weren't like, oh, hi, how are you today? And, you know, <laughs> I didn't know any of them, never talked to any of them. Just, you know, it was a smile. I mean, I think they acknowledged we were there. <laughs> Wow, I would have I would have asked Michelle Green for her autograph, and I've interviewed her. She's a sweet lady. <laughs> oh, I bet. Yeah, I don't actually remember seeing her. You know, because I think when 
to he started, we were probably along the, the end, mm -hmm. the end of L.A. Law. Yeah. Michelle, she was on. She was so good. Yeah. What a good actress. It's Susan Rutan. I've also talked to her. She's a sweet lady. She plays. Uh, she plays mean so well. <laughs> did, yeah, she was fantastic. Did Did you and Max Casella date for a while on the show? Oh yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, he says it in the DVD, um, and you know when that show took off. I mean, it, it must have been cra it must have been crazy for you. You probably got recognized everywhere just as much as Max and Neil did. Oh, yeah, and then, so, dating Max and hanging out with him, you know, Yeah. that's when I really saw, like, you, you know, the same part of it wasn't happening for me like that. It was it was just, like, people, like, ah! <laughs> like, chasing us, you know, running after us. People were mainly really nice, but it was, it was a lot of energy, you know? Yeah, and also, too, I mean... You're, you both looked pretty young, right? You're both 23, but you both looked pretty young. But he, Max looked really young, so did people think you were robbing the cradle? <laughs> <laughs> no. no, nobody ever asked that, actually. But no, you're right. Uh, I mean, he just, uh, he was actually, I think, two years younger than me. Yeah. About, like, almost two years. Yeah. Um, but he was just that kid in, you know, seventh grade who just looked like he was in fourth grade. Yeah. <laughs> and then he finally, like, really matured. <laughs> but, no, I, but they went, yeah, the people were like, Denise! And then they go, oh, hey, you're, you're Denise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you see pictures of... Yes, I am. If you see pictures of me when I was five, I looked like I was ten. I have a, a rare growth disorder, and um, I've always been—I've always uh, looked older or, uh, than I actually am. Oh, okay. And you—you've done stand-up comedy. Right? I, I did. Yeah, I did it for ten years in San Francisco. Wow. That—that that to me is rock star. I think doing stand-up comedy with—you know—I always. Always wanted to do that. I think you could have been great at it because you're so funny on the show. You just you. I think you could have done it. You're so sweet. I I love doing sketch comedy, and I felt like I, I you know done a lot of that recently, and you know. Mm -hmm. So I like doing that, but yeah, uh, stand up is I look at. People are rock stars if you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Lisa Dean Ryan, I thought was so great as Wanda. What was she like? sweetheart uh -huh. really really sweet and again so i had graduated cal art and it was it was mm -hmm. within it was like the first six eight months i graduated that i booked that show um so i was i was 22 right mm -hmm. and playing 16 uh, max was max was like i guess he was like 20 21 when it started um and then they were, Neil and Lisa were, Neil was 15, and Lisa was 17. So it was a big, you know, in my mind, it was kind of a big age difference because I was 22-year-old. But, you know, of course, I could play a 16-year-old character, but as far as being social, you know, with 16- and 17-year-olds, you know, they were 16 and 17. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, 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 I think I thought I was way more mature than I actually was, but at 22, 23, you know, I, I remember meet, meeting Neil for the first time. He was so, so adorable. And we, we became, you know, I felt like good good friends, good set friends, whatever. And uh, yeah. but I remember meeting him for the first time, and he's like, came into the makeup trailer, and he goes, what's that? And points to a thing on my chin, like I had, like, scratched my, I think it was where I... My, like a bicycle accident or something, or, yeah. you know, with, like, balls on my chin, just like a kid would do. What's that ugly thing on your face? You know, trying to pretty go on camera. <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he was funny. Uh, you know, he was really always doing, like, magic tricks on the set, which was oh, always yeah. fun. Always fun. And Lisa was, we did become uh, good friends, too, for a couple of years. Yeah. You know, uh, apart from being on the show. 
I, I thought she was going to be another Shannon Doherty or Tori Spelling at that point because, I mean, she did guest star on an episode of 90210, but I thought she was so talented, so beautiful that she could be on uh, a, a, a series for a long run, you know, after that, you know, uh, and she was great at comedy too. I remember there's one episode where Vinny is pouring his heart out to, to Wanda and she says, Vinny, don't take this the wrong way, but you really are an idiot. And just the way she says it, like she's <laughs> trying to hold back her laughter is so funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she, no, she was. She was, she was adorable and lots of fun. Like a fun girl to hang out with, you know? Yeah. A girl in class everyone wants to hang out with because she's just fun. Yeah. And she, and she really was cool, you know, and, and mature for her age, too. You know, mm -hmm. despite what I was saying before about the 16, 17 year olds or whatever, but uh, we did become quite close, and it was because she was mature for age. You know? Yeah. Do you have any favorite episodes? Uh, well, I mean, I have the ones that, that I like really had a big storyline, of course, were always, were always really fun. And um, despite like my nervousness, about like some of the I did one like pretty big stunt too yeah like a physical and that's I, I love doing like physical comedy because mm -hmm. that's my thing so all of my big ones you know even like the um Educating Janine, I think, is where you know. That's my favorite. That 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 that, that, yeah. that, that that's my favorite. That Janine is the fo is the focal point for. I I probably saw that episode in syndication more than any others. I mean, they reran that one a lot. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It's and just, like like yes. the cheese stands alone, and yes, uh, uh, where that's when I get together with Neil's character. And so he was 19 at the time, and I was 26. Mm -hmm. That when I felt like I was robbing the criminal. Like, I had to kiss him after, you know, knowing him since he was 15. It was a little, a little weird. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. You do what you got to do. Yeah. And, and, uh, okay, yeah. I probably had a crush on him for a couple of weeks after that, too. Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> he was so nice. <laughs> yeah, Janine admits to Doogie that she was raped when she was younger, and your your dramatic chops in that episode was very heartbreaking. I have to say. Mm, thank you. It was really. It was. Yeah. It was fun to have a just a storyline, you know. And yeah. then I think I don't know if you know the stunt I'm talking about, but I, in a bikini. Yes. I had two men. They off, so off camera, these two big, muscly, sporty guys, mm -hmm. but they were trainers. They knew what they were doing. They did a, you know, one, two, yeah. three with the <laughs> arms and legs and hoisted me into the pool. Yeah. And, you know, I, I did that in one take because my hair was going to get all wet and everything. Yeah. So they did, we just, we had that one take and I had to turn to the camera during the react. Vinny, you know, in mid-air. <laughs> it was fun. It really was fun. Uh, there was a time when I thought about it, you know, kind of with a lot of anxiety and like, how the heck did I do that? You know, when, what kind of training do I have for this? But yeah. you know, actually, the bat all the baton twirling and, you know, the physical comedy, it's really... There's, there should have been an episode where Janine makes the pep squad and then we get to see your, your twirling skills. <laughs> You know, the writers were talking to us and, like, I feel, siphoning ideas because there's a few ideas in there that I know they got from me. And I know yeah. they got from, from Max telling some story of the two of us, like, doing something. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I did. I tossed that at them so many times. I can't even tell you until I sounded like a, you know, total asshole. Like, <laughs> like I twirled the baton. I twirled the baton. My my two favorite moments in educating Janine is when uh, uh, Vinny's tutoring Janine, and he says, "What about your history report?" And she says, "I watched all eight hours of Lonesome Dove," <laughs> <laughs> and then right. and then there's a scene where Vinny is painting Janine's toenails two different colors, red and jelly bean pink, and yeah. I'm curious, did Max do that for you in real life? <laughs> No, he was 
Perry. Yeah, well, you know what's funny is uh-huh. that both, both he and NPH are Geminis. Uh huh. I'm a Gemini. I'm a Gemini. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I would, I would bet you right now that half of Hollywood are Gemini. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm part Gemini. I'm Aquarius, uh, uh, Gemini rising. And yeah. Aquarian man. So I am part Gemini, so I understand. But my point was, is that Max would, you know, he's like, get up early in the morning, you know. He hit the road at, you know, 6.30 a.m. Go, 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 all day. God, that's fun. All day long, all day long, you know. Yeah. Oh, like there's no, I'm more of a homebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like to be out. I like to go and do lots of things, but I like nature more. And he was more of a, you know, city, you know, New York City. Hit the yeah. streets, walk, you know, walk up the west, hit the town, walk back down. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the thing's get- much for me. <laughs> I'm more, I'm, you know, I have my mood being Aquarius. Oh, yeah. Being part Gemini. We all have our moods and our signs. <laughs> yeah. Well, I always say, you know, I'm not just two people like a Gemini. I'm like 15. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, Max is a total sweetheart. I haven't uh, talked to him in a couple of years, but, but but we talked frequently, like when I, you know, I took a break from Hollywood, and then when I was getting back in, mm-hmm. um, he tried to help me, and, you know, I talked to him frequently, and so I can always pick up the phone and call him anytime. Oh, I love that. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That is so wonderful. Uh, yeah, I love the Thanksgiving uh, episode where uh, you sing I Miss You Crazy outside the window. That was a sweet moment. Uh, and the, remember the 30-something episode where you're all on the phone talking? <laughs> yeah. I loved that episode. That, that is really, that's, I've got a couple of pictures mm-hmm. from, shoot, from the set from shooting that episode, like when we were in rehearsal. Yeah, and it's a it's a four shot, and I've got like my hair, you know, and the curlers and everything. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I was in the bathtub. Yeah, I have this great picture of I'm in the bathtub, and it's a you know pullback, and you yeah. see the makeup guy, the hair guy, the bubble guy, or the hair lady, the, the bubble guy, like, and the whole set is surrounding the bathtub. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, um, so did they write you out of the show after a while? They, yeah. Uh, uh, I remember I, I remember getting the phone call <laughs> when I was on set. They were to, to tell me, we're not sure if they're bringing you back next season. But, you know, and in those days you didn't get, you couldn't go audition for anything else. They could be held over. So, so but that's, you know. I was auditioning for Roseanne, I think, like the next month or whenever when they released me. Oh yeah. And I was up. I was up for the replacement Becky too. So, oh yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. That must have been crazy. Oh, it was so fun. I knew Roseanne was up in the booth, mm-hmm. and I met John Goodman down on the set in the kitchen, and um, they had I want to say seven of us. There was like seven or nine of us, and. Um, Sarah Chalk, who, who booked the role, she she was there, mm-hmm. uh, and they had us all in the same in the same shirt, you know, like the same. We're supposed to just wear jeans, and then they put us all in the exact same shirt. And so I'm walking around with like these seven other girls, like we're kind of milling around and get makeup on in the same shirt. It was crazy, and then go out, and it was the whole uh, sitcom set where they had the giant the three giant cameras and yeah. they just like come at you at like 30 miles an hour or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like whoa we did the scene but it was just it was thrilling because I knew Roseanne was up there and I knew I was you know I was a contender Aren't you kind of glad, though, you didn't get it, given, you know, the stink that has happened the last, you know, six years since that incident happened where she was fired from her own show Yeah, I I I wonder, uh, oh, I know I, at that moment in time, had I booked that job, uh, uh, I probably would have gotten out of Hollywood faster. <laughs> 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 and I probably wouldn't have 
Although I'm a big fan of Roseanne Barr. I oh, just, yeah. At that moment in time, I would not have been able to handle that on a personal level, her personality probably in a work environment. No, I, I would not have been able to handle it. <laughs> oh, my God. There was an actress. I can do it now. Yeah, there was an actress who guest starred on the show, and she was having an abusive, um, uh, an abusive situation at her home. You know, she was like 12, 13 years old, right? And after she had guest starred a few times, Roseanne said to her, how would you like to come live with me and Tom? And she's like, no, I couldn't do that. And that brought a tear to my eye because, you know, given all the stuff that's written about Roseanne, that, that shows, you know, her, 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 her sweet side, I think, really, really well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I became a really big fan. I guess it was near the beginning of Twitter when mm-hmm. she was she was on Twitter, like, uh, just, you know, go, 24-7. She was <laughs> and it was like 2012, 2013, and I became a big fan of um, her son, too, who had, like, a little radio thing or, you know. Yeah. Uh, I just... I just started really following her, and so I've always, I, and I was a fan back then too. But um, yeah, she was just a huge, dynamic personality, and I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure I would have been petrified, you know, had I had I booked that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sad. It's sad that uh, you you were written out of the show so abruptly. I I know Bochco said for years that you know he wanted to do a fifth season of Doogie Howser, but that ABC said no. I'm sure if they had done a fifth season, you probably would have been brought back, and you probably would have married Vinny on the show. Oh, thanks. That's sweet. I'd like to think that was that that was what was going to happen because he he definitely was going to have Doogie leave the medical field and become a writer in the fifth season. Yeah. I never heard that. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that... well, they kind of, when they put him in the big loft and Vinny and Doogie moved in together and they just started dating, you know, mm-hmm. one girl after another, it just kind of, what, it, what does it call it? Jump, jump the shark or... I don't think it was that interesting. Well, the show got more dramatic as it went on, you know, but, you know, the humor was still always there. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I really like the foursome, you know, Vinny and Janine and Doogie and Wanda. I, I would yeah. think, obviously, kept us all together the whole time. Those were the best, yeah. I know. So I did, Mitchell I, Anderson, it's so funny that he, he was... Mitchell Anderson, he, yeah. <laughs> he did as many episodes as I did, I think, or, or just, I think he did like 56 and I did 64 or something. Yeah. He was only there, what, the first two seasons? Yeah, and it, that that always baffled my mind as to why he he started to get so few lines as as the show went on in in the first two seasons because yeah. I thought he was very talented and there was episodes where he was like standing up for Doogie despite the fact that he was jealous of him, you know. Right, right, and, and another really good actor, another yeah. really good actor, and a handsome um, guy too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean. <laughs> Doesn't get any handsomer than that. Catherine Lang, she's married to the guy who wrote M. Butterfly. I know. I yeah. know. Uh, for years, and she was they were dating when she was shooting Doogie. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, because she did, she did M, was it M. Butterfly that she did on Broadway? Was, so she was, you know, Bro- not like M, she wasn't like the lead or anything. She probably did do it because, you know, her husband wrote it. <laughs> I, well, I think that's how they met. She was in, you know, mm-hmm. his Broadway show. Uh, she either had a supporting role or was in the chorus or something, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's when they started dating, and then she came to L.A. to shoot Doogie, and they were still dating. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, she's like Manhattan socialite, isn't she, or something? <laughs> Probably, uh, I've been trying to get uh, Belinda Montgomery on here for a while. Hopefully, it'll happen this yeah. year. Oh, well, I, I, it's so nice that you, you know, kept at me, and I, when, when I contacted you, you were like. Oh, I was. Right away. That's so sweet. Luck, luckily, I happened yeah. to be in the room, and I was like, "Yes, I, I got right to it." <laughs> I just, I never felt, I didn't feel like I had a lot to talk about. You know, I've, I've been working, and but uh, things here and there, and you 
know, but this movie was something more, uh, and, uh, you know, real yeah. nice and juicy character. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't realize you were in Zapped Again. Oh, yeah. That was, um, uh-huh. let's see, uh, so uh, the ABC After School Special, that's where I got my SAG card. And then Zapped Again was like my first job I booked after I got my SAG card. I, I love the original um, with Scott with Scott Bayo, and uh, I was I was scared to death as a kid with the uh, the exorcism with the ventriloquist in that one, but <laughs> but I used to see this one on USA Up All Night uh, uh, a lot when I was a kid, and I, I know an, another actor um, Ira Hayden uh, who's in this movie as well. Oh yeah, he was great, right, Ira? Yeah, he was the uh, the, the the dungeon uh, master in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Three. <laughs> how nice! How was making Sleepwalkers? Oh, that was fun. That was I had a week shoot on that, and that was on, during one of the hiatuses uh, on duty. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you know, it was the same time that Max was shooting Newsies. Oh yeah. Really, it was like that same. Or no, what was the story? We were dating, they came out the same week, and Newsies didn't really do that well when it first was released. Yeah, that was a cult classic. (laughs) It stood the test of time, and it's like a cult following classic. Yeah. All the way, but uh, Sleepwalkers was the box office hit more than, um, you know, Newsies when they came out. it was fun. It was a week shoot, and uh, Machen Amex was just so, you know, she was so vivacious and uh, fun and silly and, you know, entertaining. Yeah. So, you know, she was just, like, fun to watch, really. And Glenn Shadix was hilarious as the teacher. It's so sad he's gone now. I know. I know. The, the actress who plays the mother, too, I just saw her in something, oh gosh, her IMDb is, you know, huge. Yeah. I thought she was, I thought she was great in Sleepwalkers. I really did. Is yeah. She was, was she a British actress? I Al- didn't have any. Alice actors, Krieg? Her, so. <laughs> yeah. Alice Krieg? I um, saw her. What yeah, you know? uh, she's from South Africa, so she's got British roots, yeah. <laughs> there we go. That, that's what it is. Um, and, and a dance background. I think she's like a ballet. Uh, Mick Garris, uh, I was scheduled to interview him at one point years ago, and it didn't happen for whatever reason. He's a busy guy, I'll tell you. I mean, he's got a show called uh, Postmortem where he inter- interviews other horror people because that's how he started. He was an interviewer, you know, and a movie critic, and then he started making movies because he had an inside track. Oh, wow. Yeah, he had a cable access show in L.A., and he had everybody from William Shatner on to uh, John Carpenter, who you worked with on Body Bags. Uh, yeah. Lots of, lots of people, and he, he got into the, the, the horror world that way from having a cable access show. And there, there's, I think there's episodes and clips of it on YouTube. Stuff you did um, a Star Trek Next Generation episode. Were you a Star Trek fan? Yeah. That's, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I grew up watching um, William Shatner. I mean, I always I feel like I have I have the William Shatner accent, being from Portland, Oregon. Yeah. <laughs> so I talk like this. I have to really think about it to string my words together and go listening up and down. Other, otherwise, I will talk like William Shatner. <laughs> But uh, I loved Star Trek. I loved it, and that's you know I wasn't I wasn't intimidated walking onto the set of Star Trek, and you know walking onto the Enterprise. So maybe I could have walked onto the set of Roseanne. Been fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was so much fun. Uh, Maria Sirtis was really uh, she was really good. You know. Yeah. Boy, it, it wasn't. It was literally like just. Sitting down, there was there was barely a you know hello or anything. Just we, we went right into the scene, and um, what a great scene partner she she was. She was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Have and you been invited to knocked, do? I think we knocked that scene out. Yeah. Literally, you know, I was there most of the day, just getting in makeup and 
had gone in for the costume fitting, for the, the suit, and, uh, but the actual scene, you know, the shooting it was, was probably 40 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, and that was a long scene, too. That's a very long scene. Yeah, I remember, I remember there, there, I'd be watching that show and I'd be like, wow, this scene is going on for a while, you know? Right? Yeah, it was a very yeah. s- slow-moving show, but it was also, I think, the most entertaining out of all the Star Trek incarnations. Oh, the next gen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, um, well, Picard, he, oh, man. Oh, he came to CalArts when I was, like, I think my last year and talked. That, that, that must have been after he kissed Steve Rills back in Life Force. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God, what an amazing, amazing guy. Have you been invited to do any of the Star Trek conventions? Mm, no. Because it's gotten to the point now where um, if you guest starred only one time on any Star Trek show, they'll invite you. I tried uh, quite a few, uh, you know, a number of years ago now. But um, had some uh, new guy, and uh, I did some, like, fan cards that they sold online. And um, so I did a little bit of work mm-hmm. with them. But, and he submitted me for the festival. But, you know, it's also gotten so big now. All the stars, you know, all the big stars are doing them. Because, yeah. you know, it's pretty good. It's decent money. And it's fun. Um, so it's, it is, it's more, it's more competition with, you know, all the lead characters to get into those. The, the original Star Trek series had so many guest stars that ended up leaving the business not long after that, that they're still alive, 80, 90 years old, and they sign autographs at the Hollywood show. I know, I know. And I've gotten to interview a bunch of them too, yeah. Yeah, it's wonderful, it's great, I'll... You know, hopefully, I mean, murder and cocktails does well, and I, I, I get some other work in the next few years, and maybe someday I can do the. I'd love to do the convention. It'd be so fun. I'm sure. I'm sure there'll be a Doogie Howser reunion that one because you go to a Hollywood show, you'll see the cast of Lost in Space on one corner, you'll see the cast of Porky's on another, you'll <laughs> you'll see um, you know some guest stars from Seinfeld on the other. I mean, it's it's a variety you know autograph show. <laughs> well, both both Neil and Max are really busy, you know. Yeah. Max Max has recently been you know in whatever he's doing, working with Woody Allen. Oh, uh, but if they got if they got you and Lisa Dean Ryan and Marcus Redman, I'd be I'd be happy just to go meet you three. Oh, there. You there. Go. <laughs> if they did, if they did that, yeah, that would be fantastic. I bet that's a possibility. That is that is. <laughs> I, I didn't realize you guest starred on Major Dad. Oh yeah, that was the week uh, that I worked on that too. It was a big. I had I think I had like five, four or five scenes. Yeah, and it was directed by Michael Lembeck, Captain Cool from the yes. Croft Brothers Super Show. <laughs> I know. Gosh, he was so talented. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Just, uh, you know, he he would tell me, he would basically give me a line reading. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really understand the how that was going to be funny, the comedy of it. But I just, you know, learning it, because I'm a tap dancer. So I learned things like on, with, on the beat. And yeah. so he just said, just, just say it like this. <laughs> and he just started, <laughs> he just started busting up laughing. <laughs> it was so much fun. And I still didn't, you know, I didn't fully understand it until I got in front of an audience and then did the line reading the way he wanted. And then I, and then I understood where the comedy was coming from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So you just did that brief little moment in, in body bags when you drop off Alex Natcher at work, you know, and you're like, wow, if I had work here, I'd be scared shitless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. I just I just remember it being, we shot that out in uh, Joshua Tree. Uh-huh. No, I wasn't all the way in Joshua Tree. Um, it wasn't, maybe it was just outside of Palm Springs. And... Um, 
uh, and it was late at night. Um, a couple guys from the crew, the lighting crew from Doogie, were mm. on that set. So it was nice to like walk onto a set and like you know knew some people. Mm-hmm. But I just remember John Carpenter like off to you know he was like right there where your your side mirror is on your car. Like that's where he was, like right there in my face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> staring at me and I'm like oh my god it's John Carpenter <laughs> you know he's yeah. sitting there thinking it was, it was really fun I, yeah, I mean, when I was growing up, Carpenter and George Romero were my two horror guys as, as far as filmmakers go. I thought they did the best horror movies. Um, mm-hmm. That even even non-horror and sci-fi movies could appreciate their filmmaking, I, I felt. Um, yeah, there's people in that uh, segment that I've met, Bobby Carradine and David Naughton, two very sweet guys. Peter Jason, another sweet guy. The the late uh-huh. great the late great George Buck Flower, who was the bum in Back to the Future. I've interviewed his best friend uh, John Goff, who was like his partner in crime. They uh, they they wrote movies together and stuff. Oh wow. Yeah, uh, uh, Carpenter, you know, he had his repertoire of guys, and a lot of these guys, you know, were in lots of his other previous movies. Oh really? Yeah. Did he? Have, did he uh, was there women that he reused that like? Recurring kind of roles, or should we? Uh, well, he was married to Adrian Barbeau, so he casted her oh, at, at least three times that I can think of. Course. And, um, uh, of uh, that's all I can think of. <laughs> you know, I always, I uh, that's right, I always thought the lead girl in that, in my segment, mm-hmm. uh, which is, I always thought she looked like Adrian Barbeau. Yeah, and she's got the same birthday as me, June 6th. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Adrian Barbeau? Oh, oh, no, no, no. I'm talking about Alex Datcher, oh. uh, your co-star oh. in Body Bags. No, no, Adrian's That's actually nice. June 11th. She's also a Gemini. There you go. It proves my point. Both Gemini men and women are, uh, you know, exuberant. They have, they have so many friends. Mm-hmm. They are like usually the life of the party. Yep. Uh, they're they're just yeah. Um, I'm the life of the party. I'm a I'm a dirty joke teller and I'm a body storyteller. <laughs> they, you know, and the women, you know, they just. I'm always amazed at how big their circle is of friends of people in their like the phone is constant. It's always ringing. <laughs> yeah. It's I'm no. not. I'm I'm part. I'm only part Gemini, and I'm it's really like. That part of me kind of is, is exhausting to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I think even if I wasn't a Gemini, I would still have a lot of friends because I'm just like my father. Like, my dad knows everybody. Everybody knows him. He's the guy that says hi to everybody, you know. And, you yeah. know, just we believe in, you know, that kind of, of kindness and being down to earth, you know. Wait a minute, Tommy. Max Casella's birthday is June 6th. Is he June 6th? I think so. Let me look it up here. <laughs> Let's look it up. Oh, my God. That would be funny. Is it? Yes. Yes, yes you're right. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, we share a birthday with Robert England, Freddy Krueger, and then uh, Prince was the next day, June 7th, and Dean Martin was June 7th as well. <laughs> Robert England is uh, one of my very favorite actors. Uh, a sweet guy. I've I've met him. Real sweet guy. Mm-hmm. A uh, a short short film I did like uh, a few years ago. You know, getting getting back in the business was mm-hmm. called. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, the creature with a thousand legs. I think was the, it ended up being called, but it was so much fun. I played uh, this mom who this kid like this, get, does a science experiment, and I turn I end up turning into the monster. Yeah. <laughs> so much fun. Did you have to wear makeup? <laughs> oh. Oh yeah, I was in makeup uh, for hours. It ended up, they ended up calling it Tater, and that's and I think you could even it's even it's on YouTube. Oh, uh, I'll check my, it out. <laughs> like my YouTube, but I was in yeah I was, I was in and out of um, all kinds of makeup where they the adhesives where they put mm-hmm. on like I turned into this scaly you know 
monster. And and I I was thinking about Freddy Krueger the whole time, like Robert England and how he did Freddy Krueger and mm. would turn into you know turn to the camera. Wow. <laughs> 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 oh, so you, you're waiting for me to do a line of Freddy Krueger. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't go anywhere. Sorry about that. So, <laughs> so what, what happened? Did you leave acting for a while and then just decided it was time to come back? Uh, yeah, I think um, I was getting. I'd done like eight to ten years, and I was just evolving from. You know, playing 16-year-olds more into, like, real women, I think. And mm -hmm. I don't know, it was just that, that kind of time in the industry, the early 90s. It was different. Um, so, you know, I stepped away and did some other things. I worked a good corporate job for a while. and mm -hmm. But uh, but I always, you know, was, like, looking back and trying to dabble a little bit. And, um, and then just missed it so much. <laughs> back full time. <laughs> Yeah. But actually now I get characters that are really interesting. I played this character in Hard Luck Love Song. And, mm -hmm. I, and I have a, just a scene with the lead guy, Michael Dorman. I was looking that up. Eric Roberts is in that. I've talked to him. Yeah, yeah. He was great in it, too. Wonderfully eccentric was, guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, uh, Michael Dorman was fantastic. And the scene I played, uh, you know, she was a, a mentally challenged, you know, Tourette syndrome woman mm -hmm. who, you know, worked at the Goodwill. And I just don't, yeah, I know I wouldn't be playing those kind of characters if I just stayed on the, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I, like, I like these eclectic characters I'm playing now. This, and the one in Murder... You know, and cocktails yeah. is the same. It's uh, you know, she she's a weirdo. I'm I'm a subscriber of your YouTube channel that uh, you just referenced. There's a couple funny videos on there where you're being interviewed about being uh, being gr growing up in Scientology. Did that really happen? Oh, thank you, thank you. That was just my uh, you know kind of that Andy Kaufman phase I was experimenting with. Um, yeah, I did grow up in the Church of Scientology, but uh, a lot of those stories are embellished or fabricated, you know. Um, yeah. But, yeah, my, my, both my parents were, I guess, ministers, quote-unquote, in the Church of Scientology. Yeah. But uh, I always felt, you know, from the second grade on, I was kind of not, you know, I just thought it was kind of weird. Yeah. Kind of, kind of kooky. And my dad did a lot of kind of kooky things. But uh, he did end up, he turned around and he sued the Church of Scientology when I was, so I guess they got in. They were in on the ground floor up in Portland, Oregon, too, mm -hmm. of the church, you know. Like, it, it, it was when L. Ron Hubbard was around and the Sea Org and everything. So they, and then they got out when I was about 13, 14. Yeah. He, he, he sued the church on a class action suit, and, like, they won. And so um, so it was just like a, you know, six-year period. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Thank God for 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 Leah Remini. Hopefully, you know, there's she's going to come out slugging oh, yeah. in this situation that she's in. You know, I've I've interviewed many of Milton Casellas' students, and so many of them either never went to the class, or they did and they stayed in it for a little while and got out, or they they're still in it and they don't talk about it. You know, it's just it's a really creepy, interesting phenomenon. Well, yeah, the, the thing that happened with me, probably the most impact it had was just on my relationship with my father. And, you know, yeah. bless, his, bless his heart. Both my parents have passed on now. Um, they were, you know, so sweet and supportive of my dreams and everything. They so can't really, yeah. you know, I say much. It. But they, they really did, um, it had an impact on his and my relationship because he was, yeah, he was e-metering me yeah. when I was nine and ten years old, and that's pretty much well, that was like our father-daughter time together. Was when he would, I would sit, get the cans. I'd have the two cans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he had the e-meter in front of him, and he'd be like, "Now, Lucy, did you, uh, you know, how'd you feel about this?" And I, 
I would just start making shit up because, you know, I, he's like, and then, and then all of a sudden he'd say, and then how did that make you feel in your past life? And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't, we just didn't have a great, you know, but he, he sent me to Kellars. He paid for all that. I did, you know. Yeah. Like, he was wonderful. So, but the, yeah, the Scientology was, it was, it was just part of my parents, you know, like I grew up in the 70s, basically. And yeah. uh, they were, it was that time uh, in America where people were, in the 70s, you know, people were searching for things. I don't know, they were searching for themselves, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad did a lot of that thing. He was like, he was in Scientology. He was in AA, um, yeah. and he was in, you know, he was a big joiner. He 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 did. He was on the local fishing channel too. He was a big, big, big fisherman in mm. the Pacific Northwest. He had three fishing boats. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, he was a complicated job. Yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> uh, you mentioned before the improv comedy. Yeah, you, you, you were doing a series called Too Hot to Handle. Is that still going? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we still have, uh, we have one, uh, one thing that we've shot that hasn't been just being edited now. So um, it's a, a spoof on <laughs> the Bridgerton, mm -hmm. Bridgerton show. So we're both, Han and I are in full, like, you know, 1890s white dresses, and and we're searching. I'm I'm playing her mother, and we're searching um, for her for a husband <laughs> up in and yeah. we're up in Laurel Canyon, like on this trail. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the legendary Laurel Canyon. Yeah, exactly. It's just like silly. It's silly, but it was a it was a chance for me to do an English accent and and do this, you know, kind of Bridgerton character. <laughs> that is fantastic, though. At least you're 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 active and you're you're doing all these new different things, you know. Yeah, it's, it's fun. It's fun. I'm glad you like the Scientology one. I, it was just something I, you know, I once. I think it's just funny growing up in the church, and and I love that. Yeah. A type of comedy where you're not sure if you should laugh or cry yeah. for this person because <laughs> it might be. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that area. <laughs> <laughs> so real quick, we got to play my secret silly game. This is a series of oh. silly slumber party questions. It's no win or lose. It's just pure fun. And how the game works is, Lucy, I ask you the question, you answer it, and then you ask me that exact same question, and I answer it. And feel free to comment on the answers, because they might be funny. Okay. Lucy, are you ticklish? Yes, I'm ticklish. Then I ask you. Yes, yeah. I'm really ticklish. Uh, are you ticklish? Yes, but if you tickle me without warning, though, I might hit you in the groin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is your belly button an innie or an outie? Uh, my belly button is an innie. Nice. Yeah. What, what, is your belly button an innie or an outie? It is also an indie. Oh, good. And I and I have I have seen yours, you know, in the bikini on that Doogie Howser episode, oh. but I I didn't know you know, I didn't know if it was like an indie Audi or not, so I had to be clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've I've always been happy with my belly button. That Audi Audi belly buttons that's they're kind of strange. They are. I, I, I do like them, though, you know, if they're not too gross, if they're not too doorknobby, you know. <laughs> Look, if you, if you have an opportunity to get close to a belly button, I think you're doing fine. Don't worry. <laughs> Any kind of belly button. You're good. Yeah. Uh, what color are your toenails painted? Uh, but not, uh, uh, nothing. Nude. <laughs> okay. What color are your toenails painted? Same. They are au naturel. Yeah, au naturel. That's it. What would you say is your best? Mine are. <laughs> what would you say is your best? Per... What would you say is your best personality trait? Uh, I like to laugh. Yes, you have a great laugh. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yes. What? Uh, 
What do you think your best personality trait is? Well, because I'm a Gemini, I have empathy and no filter. <laughs> <laughs> Good, yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. If you could have anything named after you, what would it be? Anything named after me? Yeah. Uh, well, how about a Starbucks co uh, <laughs> drink? Like a, one of the holiday drinks, like a Lucy. A fluffy Lucy. Fluffy <laughs> 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 Lucy or something, you know? That would be cute, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that would be huge, too. I mean, you'd be, like, famous if you got that. <laughs> <laughs> and then for me... Oh, what, would, what, would, uh, what would you have named after you? Do you have anything named after you? Okay, here's where my, my evil twin comes in. Uh, a, a vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> I would call it the Tommy Chatsy. <laughs> oh my god. And then my favorite question, is there a stinky smell that just makes you gag? Uh yeah. I have a really sensitive mood. <laughs> um yeah. uh, and, uh, probably uh, you know, I have a I have a fifty two pound dog. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> and He's I huge. I love her so much, but I almost gag every day when I, you know, pick up her poop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. What about you? Is there a smell that almost makes you gag? Yeah, it's either farts or feet. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, people can, uh, the women have died of farts. <laughs> I have never heard that. Although my mom said she's like she's like here's my my uh, hashtag Me Too narrative. Guys, stop farting in front of women. <laughs> yeah, there's like this there's like this story where this guy they're like on their honeymoon and he farts and like shoved her head like under the covers and yeah. kept it there because he, and she died. Wow, that's the only time I've ever heard of death by a Dutch oven. Wow. Look it up. I mean, maybe it's, maybe it's just an internet story, but it, it, there is, because there's gases. There are gases, noxious gases, is that how you say it? Yeah. <laughs> and and they, they, you can't die. Yeah, you don't want to do that, you know. Oh, you man. You around with the farts, but you can't. Oh, man. You can't go all the way. <laughs> <laughs> so aside, aside from Murder and Cocktails which is now available on Amazon and Apple TV is there anything else you got coming up? Well yeah if, this, if the movie does well if you know people download it people watch it I'll definitely check it out Oh thank you yeah there's a Ron uh, has a sequel already written or a, a, a first draft written Nice and, uh, and I'm in it so that would be exciting so if this movie does well, yeah. Lucy, you're amazing. Thank you so much for coming on finally. And I'm going to go cry because dreams really do come true. Like I said, <laughs> I'll watch Murder and Cocktails. And I'll see you on Instagram. And be safe out Aww. there. Thank you so much. I had so much fun talking to you and hanging out. I really appreciate it. Uh, call me anytime or have me back anytime. Oh, that would be fantastic. Well, have a great day, Tommy. It was nice talking to you. You too, Lucy. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Well, there you have it. Lucy Borier. Ain't she a sweetheart? Oh, my God. I love her. I love her energy, her laugh, her sense of humor, everything about her. She was everything I'd hoped she would be. I love Janine Stewart, but I also love Lucy Borier a lot more. And I'm so glad we got to talk today. Thank you, God, for this opportunity. Well, until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes!